Last year as a woodworking project, my dad and I made a 19 by 19 full-size go board out of a black walnut with a brass wire metal inlay. And if you haven't played go before, um, it's sort of like, uh, I guess vaguely like checkers. Um, it's a really fun strategy game, perfect information game. And you play with uh, black and white stones on the intersections of these grid lines. And a traditional go board is made with, made of a, a block of wood, often thicker than this one, with black lines painted on it. And the fancy ones have the lines applied with a metal sword. Um, and my goal with this project was to see if it would be possible, rather than using paint to apply the lines, uh, to inlay wire into the wood. And with a metal inlay, you get these beautiful uh, metal lines that don't wear off because it's actually metal embedded into the surface of the wood. And you can see the board also has these little circles. These are called star points. And I made those out of brass rod. And so uh, I didn't have a video of the process to make this board. It was very experimental to see, you know, if this proof of concept would work. It ended up working great. But um, if you play Go, you might know that um, a full-size game on this 19 by 19 board can take a really long time. So uh, when I'm playing Go with friends, sometimes we want to play a smaller game. And so I have this uh, pretty janky piece of cardboard cut out. Um, so that we can restrict the board to a smaller 9x9 nine nine grid and play faster games. Um, this piece of paper is kind of annoying to keep on here, and um, you do need to know where the edge of the board is in order to play accurately. So um, I was thinking, you know, if I made a full-size board again, I might mark off the 9x9 nine nine grid on here and the, also a common size 13x13, 13 13, so it'd be easier to see. But uh, in the meantime, I thought, why not try again and make a smaller 9x9 nine nine board just for playing these shorter games. So in this video I'm going to walk through the process of making the smaller 9x9 nine nine board. And just to show you what the finished product will look like, here it is. You can see the relative size is much smaller. And um, we'll go through the design considerations and goals and uh, then I'll show you the process of making it. And um, obviously we're starting here with the finished product, so I'm filming this after having made it, but uh, I do have footage from the process along the way, so let's go. To get started, let's talk about the goals for this project. So as you know, I already had this full-size 19x19 Go board, and I wanted to try using the same metal inlay process again to make a 9x9 version so that we could play faster games without needing the piece of cardboard on top. And there were a few design and manufacturing issues with the original board that I wanted to try to fix with this smaller 9x9 to see if it would be possible. So the first one here is you can see this center star point is a little off center and there's a little gap between the metal rod used to make the star point and the wires used to make the grid. So I wanted to fix the center star point. It turns out it's actually very obvious when you're looking at the board. Your eye is naturally drawn to the center. So it's worth spending a little extra time getting the center point correct. Another problem I had, you can see over here, is that I sanded the original board a lot. And when I was sanding it, in some places the wire wasn't inlaid very deep and I actually sanded all the way through the wire and it broke. And that leaves a broken line. And this isn't very noticeable. Overall, the grid looks very uniform, but um, you can kind of see it if you look closely. There's little breaks in the wire in some places. And in other places I had to, the break got so bad, the wire was so thin, it was like a foil that peeled back. And I had to actually peel it out, route out the wood deeper with a Dremel, and then insert new wire. So it ended up taking a long time. Here you can see another kind of error where the wire was a little bit crooked when I put it in. So the cross section of the wire when I sanded it wasn't square. And uh, that means there's a little gap there where you can see the uh, side of the wood and also the line doesn't look like it's a uniform thickness. So that's another kind of error that I wanted to fix. Uh, finally, there was, um, I had to sand this board a lot, like I said. So I had some trouble with the sanding beyond just sanding through the wire. And I don't know if you'll be able to see this on the camera, but um, these cells between the wires are slightly cupped. The board isn't perfectly flat. And when you rub your finger over the board, you can feel that between the brass wires, the wood sort of cups down. And that's because the sanding pad on an orbital sander is on a uh, rubber back, and so it's flexible. And when you sand this material, like this board with wire and wood, 
for an extended period of time, especially with a lot of pressure, the sanding pad will be uh, pushed up by the wire, so it'll have trouble sanding the, the harder wire. But where it passes over the wood, it'll expand down into the wood and make sort of a cup. So the wire was effectively repelling the sander while the wood was um, taking on a more, uh, like a deeper sanding. And that made it a non, like a less flat finish. So uh, with this nine by nine, uh, a goal is to, one of my goals is just to keep the sanding to a minimum. And that way we won't have this cupping problem and the surface will be flatter. So uh, those are the goals and let's get started on the process. The first step in the process of making this go board is cutting the blank. And I'll start by talking a little bit about the raw material because it turns out that finding uh, big pieces of black walnut, which is what this board is made of, is pretty hard. So sometimes, depending on where you live, your local home improvement or woodworking store might have uh, hardwood that's satisfactory, but uh, generally the pieces won't be this big. And that means you need to edge glue several boards together to make a larger board. And I don't have a planer, so I didn't have a way to make the boards flat enough to glue them together. So uh, just like for the last Go board I made, I ended up buying booze block cutting boards. And these are pretty expensive. Uh, the board I'm cutting in this video is 18 by 24 inches. And it was like $130. And obviously, if you get a bigger one, it's more expensive. If you can find a deal on these, then it wouldn't even have to be brand new because we're going to sand it anyway. And obviously it's completely being cut up. But uh, even at more than $100, I think these are pretty competitively priced for the amount of work they save and the raw materials that they contain. So uh, for a small volume like this, like an experiment, I think this is fine. But if I were to make more of these, I'd want to find a source of walnut that's cheaper. So we had to cut these to size. And here I'm using a table saw, uh, just cutting the board in half, the cutting board, and then we're going to cut each one down to the final size of go board. On this final cut, you can see the first mistake, and there's bound to be at least one mistake. I generally am not particularly good at measuring, even though I was trying to be careful here. So this cut's fine, looks like it's going well, but from this angle you can see something I didn't see when I was holding the wood in the saw, which is that I clearly didn't just cut off the whole handle. So there's a big void in the side of my board uh, and we're going to have to do something either, I mean, like we can't cut it bigger, so we're either going to have to cover that with something or make it look intentional. And uh, this is just one of those <laughs> moments where you realize you made a mistake and you just got to keep moving. And I'd already cut both blanks down to the narrower dimension of the go board, so I couldn't just reorient the piece and cut more off. This was a... There's no way to go back. So uh, if I were to do this again, I would orient the boards the other direction. I was trying to get clever and save a little bit of wood by uh, turning the board so that the long dimension was uh, aligned with the long dimension of the original cutting board. And that meant that the uh, handle of the original cutting board was left when I uh, 
barely shaved off the end. So I could have just cut the boards in the other direction such that the long direction of the go board was uh, perpendicular to the original long direction of the cutting board. And then I would have cut off a significant enough amount of wood to remove the cutting board handle. So uh, that was the first mistake. Um, and later I'll talk about how we covered that up and turned it into a feature. With both the blanks in hand, it was time to dial in the settings of the laser cutter. And the laser cutter is a little finicky. Um, the actual hardware is great. It makes great cuts, uh, super powerful. It's like 40 watts, so it can easily cut this wood. But um, its rasterization software was converting my grid design into lines of uneven thickness. And I think that has to do with it blurring the design to try to smooth the edges. So it took a bunch of attempts to get the settings right, but Basically, the goal was to get the wires to fit snugly in these little channels and give the channels enough depth that the wires would never stick out the top. I wanted them to be as flush as possible. So we made about 10 test cuts on the laser before we found the right settings. And just for reference, that's 100% power, 25% speed, and uh, a little bit of margin on these lines. I think I left 0.1 millimeters for the, uh, uh, just like the tolerance of the wire. So with the settings dialed in, uh, it was time to cut the final board. This is always a nerve-wracking part. You should make sure you tell the laser cutter to run the perimeter of the job so that you know it's not going to cut things the wrong direction. Actually, on the last go board we made with this laser cutter, it threatened to cut the board uh, in the wrong orientation because it didn't register that our design was rotated 90 degrees. So just make sure you uh, run a perimeter of the job and the laser looks like it's uh, at least drawing the right bounding box. And if you can, if you have the time and you want to be extra sure, you can run a test job, maybe at higher speed or lower power. This is already, uh, this is like 25% speed. Um, so if you run this at 100% speed, it obviously won't cut the correct depth, but you could get a sense of the design much faster. And the rest of the laser cutting job is just waiting. So. Once you get it started, uh, just cuts the whole thing. I'll just speed this up and you can watch it draw the finished grid. Moment of truth, opening up the laser cutter. Looks like this grid is just right. So it came out beautifully. And after this, time for a light sanding, and then we'll start putting the wires in. With the grid etched out of the walnut board, uh, it's time to start inlaying the wire. And this is 18, gra 18 gauge uh, square brass wire. And you can buy brass wire in different colors. This is red brass. And you can also buy it in different hardnesses. And this is what's called dead soft. So it's useful for jewelry making. Um, the wire isn't springy at all. So uh, if you bend it into a position, it will not rebound hardly at all. And it's nice to work with because you don't have to worry about straightening it out completely before you try to lay it into the wood. So like I said, during the laser cutting, the wire needs to fit snugly from side to side. Like Ideally, it'll be sort of difficult to slide into the channel that it's going to go in, but it needs to have clearance underneath it so that it can lie flush. Uh, we don't want much wire sticking up above the go board at the end because then we'll have to sand it. And the more you have to sand the board, the more the there's a risk of the wire protruding above the wood as the sander sands the wood faster than the metal. So this part is clearly very time consuming. Um, it's way faster, obviously on a 9x9 board than a full 18x18. 18 18. Uh, but we have to cut long wires to go in the long direction of the board. That was just sort of an aesthetic choice. And then going the other direction, the wires can't cross over each other. So we have to cut a short wire for every uh, horizontal segment. So here I'm just cutting little short segments of wire uh, using normal electronics uh, flush cutters. And 
unfortunately you have to cut both ends of the little segments because the flush cutters leave a little sharp point on the wire on the side that they're designed not to cut flush on. So they'll cut one side flush and the other side will have a, a little point and you've got to go back and cut that point off with the flush cutters using the correct cutting side. So I'm at the point of adding the star points to the go board and uh, I got the wires inlaid here. The star points are made of uh, four millimeter brass rod stock. And so I need to just, I drilled these out with a drill press after the laser uh, cut the shallow hole. And I need to cut these rods down to length and fit them in here. I'm trying to get them just a little bit proud of the surface of the wood so that I can sand them. If they're too proud, they'll stick out too far and then the sander goes over them, the brass is harder than the wood, and it creates little cups in the wood as it sands the wood down more than the brass. So I'm trying to keep that from happening by getting these pretty close to the right height uh, without any sanding. Um, there's another problem here. The, uh, the rods, I test fitted them when I was putting in the wire, but this one doesn't actually fit because the wire is protruding into the uh, hole there a little bit. So I'm going to dremel that wire out a tiny bit to make this rod fit more easily and make the wire spacing uniform around the star point. You can see some of this super glue has bled onto the wood that'll come off when we're sanding. And last time I made the bigger go board, I used a uh, two part epoxy. That was a huge mess. The super glue is definitely easier to control and super glue tends to sand off more easily. It doesn't penetrate as far as the epoxy did. So um, I'm looking forward to sanding this to see, see it all cleaned up. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna dremel out this wire and then uh, we'll be cutting these brass rods to length and fitting them in there just to see how they sit. And then I'll put super glue in there and stick them in for the final fitting. All right, now I, my brass rod stock fits into these holes. And uh, on the last board I made, the center point uh, was slightly off. One of the wires stopped early. It's still, I, I have that problem here. This hole looks a little bit misaligned with the rod. So I'm gonna do my best to center the 
uh, star point metal in this hole. Um, it turns out that the center of the board is really noticeable. It's like the natural focal point when you're looking at the board. So I'm trying to get the spacing here uh, nice and even because your eye is just naturally drawn to this point. You want it to look really, uh, really centered. Um, so now it's just time to cut this rod down to length and uh, we'll test fit it and then I'll sand off the burrs, make it, you know, final tiny bit flesh uh, length and then we'll glue it in. So I'm gonna use a hacksaw to cut the brass rod and then um, just use a stationary belt sander to sand it down, remove the burrs. I think it's going to be a little too long, but better too long than too short. That looks pretty good. Let's see here. So you don't want the the mistake I made on the last board uh, was letting this uh, metal rod go slightly below the surface of the wood, and then when you sand the surface of the board, the uh, any piece of this rod that's below flush will stay unsanded and it looks really obvious because you get a little curve in the surface of this circle so definitely want to make sure it's slightly proud of the wood all around and this one looks okay but when I glue it in there I'm going to glue it a little bit proud so now we just repeat for the rest of these rods All right, now it's time to glue the star point posts in place. So I already have these in their holes. Rough, they're roughly the right uh, size for each hole. I think the holes are basically all the same depth, but I'm not sure. So I'm gonna tape these in to keep them from falling out when I flip the board over. And then I'm gonna uh, glue them in one at a time. And then after that, we're gonna sand it all. This one almost went in below flush, so I'm not going to touch it. This one is ready to sand now. I've already glued in one of these, so just got four more to go. Okay, now the star point rods are in the board, so it's time to do final sanding. And uh, you can see the sides of the board have been filled in with uh, some strips of wood, uh, thanks to my dad for cutting those and gluing them in. So I'm going to use an orbital, random orbit sander to sand the sides of this board and the bottom, and then um, we're also going to sand the top and get it really smooth. And you have to be a little bit uh, gentle in sanding the top because it has this mixture of brass and wood, and you don't want to bear too hard on the sander to uh, cup the wood like I was talking about earlier. So um, this is all about the finishing now. I'm going to sand it down. Uh, get it really smooth, remove all this extra glue, and then we can uh, seal it.
So now with the rough sanding finished, we've got most of the wire looking pretty shiny. Looks good. Um, you'll see a few places like here, the brass looks a little yellower. That's because it's slightly below the surface of the wood. And uh, rather than trying to sand that down, because it's actually, it would create a um, irregularity in the surface of the board, uh, we can just go in there with some steel wool and polish the brass so that it's as shiny as the surrounding metal. And it won't be very noticeable once we coat the whole board with polyurethane. Ideally, we would have um, kept all these wires above the surface of the wood so that they're all sanded uniformly and become perfectly flush, but it's pretty hard to do. So uh, we'll tolerate a few little imperfections. A little bit of the brass goes below the surface. It's not going to be very noticeable as long as we polish everything uniformly. And here I'm rubbing the wood across the grain with the steel wool, um, just because I want to go with the direction of the wire. As a final pass, though, I'm going to go with the grain of the wood to get rid of all these abrasions that I'm creating. So another option would have been to uh, rough sand this down further to get more of the wood off uniformly and go down to the level of the wire, the lowest wire. I did that with the last board. And the risk there with over sanding is that some of the wires get razor thin. They essentially become a foil and they're barely held in except by the adhesive on their bottom surface. And then the steel wool catches those and peels them out or the sander catches them and peels them out or they just fall out. Um, and ideally we want as much wire sunken into the grid as possible. So this time around the wires are embedded much more deeply and uh, tried to sand them as lightly as possible. We're trying to leave as much metal in the board as we can. And ideally then uh, the surface finish of the board, whether it be stain or polyurethane, would just be for aesthetics and for sealing and not uh, necessary to hold the wires in place. And it's still a good idea to seal it all in, keep the wires from coming out due to thermal differences over time with the crack the glue. But um, the goal here is to keep as much wire embedded in the wood as possible so that the adhesive isn't that important, and certainly so the surface sealant isn't as important as a structural element. All right, this is looking pretty good. One other thing I wanted to mention, let's take a look at uh, this segment of wire. You can see that it doesn't look like a uniform rectangle. Towards the left, it kind of uh, ducks inward, and towards the right, it's thicker. And this highlights, you know, this non-uniform contour uh, is why it's important that we're using square wire. As you, in theory, if you were going to sand the entire surface of this board exactly flat, and you knew that you could embed every wire at exactly the same depth, then even if you used a circular wire, when you sand it, you would reveal an exactly uh, uniform cross-section of the cylinder but it's really hard to place the wires at uniform depth and then it's hard to sand everything perfectly flat and so effectively what you'd have if you used a cylindrical wire circular wire is that um, you would reveal a different cross section of the wire along its length and so the thickness of the wire exposed above the like on the surface of the board would vary a lot and humans are extremely good at seeing differences in line thickness uh, we've evolved for some reason to see tiny differences in alignment and so uh, just looking at a board like this you can see when something isn't perfectly uniform and I'm going to leave this but this uh, non-uniformity right here is because the wire wasn't laid in perfectly flat and so we're seeing actually let's see I can't quite tell uh, which way it was curved I think it was probably curved down back into the board so we're seeing uh, the tip of the wire just the edge right here we're seeing more of the center of cross section here and here. And there's a tiny bit of a curvature on the, the uh, corners of a square wire. So um, we're seeing that non-uniformity. So it's important they use square wire. That's why we want to embed it to the same depth. And you can see here, the wire isn't quite polished yet. It was tucked below the surface. So I'm going to go back and uh, make sure everything's really polished. Um, and then this one will be ready for sealing. <laughs> 
All right, I think this is good to go. So you can final inspection, you can see wires that went below the surface catch the light differently, but uh, we're gonna have a really flat surface, we'll tolerate a little bit of that waviness. I think overall it looks good. And for next time, just try to keep the wires uh, above the surface, but uh, I don't wanna over sand this, don't wanna thin out the wires. And as you know, probably know if you're watching this video, uh, Go is played on the intersections of these uh, grid lines. So we just want to check in feeling this, that each intersection is really smooth to the touch because that's where the stones are going to sit. So I'm going to say this one's done for now. Uh, I'll go grab the other board and we can sand that one. Okay, so we have the go board sanded, and they're both up on little painter's tripods here. We're using oil-based uh, satin clear polyurethane. I got my foam brush, and it doesn't take very much polyurethane to cover a tiny go board like this. I just wanted to show you all the uh, difference in color between the sanded walnut and the walnut sealed with polyurethane. Uh, even without staining, it gets significantly darker and richer and this will prevent the brass wire from corroding. It also smooths over any surface imperfections we may have between the wood and the metal. Uh, and we'll keep this looking nice even through use. So just going over both boards with polyurethane, then I'll do, I'll do the sides of this one after I do the top. And then after all this dries, we'll do the bottom separately. Um, last time I tried to do everything in one day and we ended up propping the board up on uh, little painter's points and it results in a, a pretty big divot so it's hard to conceal that in the finish so this time I'm going to take it a little slower and let this dry before flipping it over. I just finished applying polyurethane to the top and sides of the first board and you can see the difference in color and glossiness. This is going to dry much less glossy than it is now but you can definitely see how the colors pop. It makes the brass much easier to see on the background of wood than on the unsealed board. I just finished up these two 9x9 go boards and I wanted to talk briefly about uh, how we finish the polyurethane on top. So we're using satin urethane and after you apply the polyurethane, you try to apply it without bubbles. Obviously don't shake it while it's in the container. And I applied this with a foam brush, like I showed earlier. And these are these both have two coats on them. When you're applying the polyurethane, you can put it on really smoothly, but it's likely that it'll have at least one bubble or a small blemish from an imperfection in the underlying wood. So after the polyurethane dries, you might want to apply some kind of finishing uh, to the surface to smooth it out. So for these go boards, um, I did some light finishing after the polyurethane had dried. So I have some uh, 800 grit sandpaper here, uh, wet or dry sandpaper on a sanding block. I've been using this to sand them wet. And I sand with the grain of the wood. Uh, I didn't show this part because I don't have enough hands to sand these and hold the camera, but uh, sanding with the grain and that's just to remove the any kind of large imperfections like bubbles or a little um, dust nibs that formed in the polyurethane surface. And then I applied some uh, Meguiar's car polish uh, that you just put on a cloth or put on the surface and then rub it around and then wipe off with a clean cloth. And I would say the car polish is nice because the sandpaper leaves a tiny bit of streakiness where it only cuts the, the higher part of the grain. And 
the car polish will help you sort of even out, the, bring back that even satin finish. And you have to be really careful with the car polish. It's easy to overdo it. Um, actually, this table that the GoBoards are sitting on, we just refinished, and it actually also has the same satin urethane on it. So uh, you can see the table is very glossy. It reflects light like it's wet. And that's because we polished it with the same polish, but with a little bit more force, and it became glossy. So these go boards are still a satin finish. Be careful with the polish, don't overdo it. These are ultra light polish. And I'll show you the back. You can see the surface texture. There's still a little bit of splotchiness, like a tiny bit of uh, unevenness. See on that corner, the back corner. Uh, you can see how the, some light is reflected and then there's some darker parts. And that's partly due to the wood grain, the, you know, the sh shape of the surface of the urethane catches sandpaper differently and catches light differently. So I'm gonna accept some of that. You can see here, there's like a little bit of variation in the glossiness. These things are really obvious in this kind of indirect light, um, diffuse light from the side, but they're not that obvious when you're just looking at the board like you're playing the game. So uh, if anyone has ideas on how to get rid of that kind of streaking, let me know. Um, it's pretty tricky to get a good satin finish on the urethane, like a homogenous satin finish. So overall, let's talk about how this experiment went. The goal was to make a smaller Go board for ease of playing smaller games, not having to get out the big 19 by 19 board. And I also wanted to test a few changes to the manufacturing process. Uh, one was to embed the wires more deeply so that less sanding was required. And I'd say that was a big success. These wires all went in really evenly. Uh, very few of them stuck up above the surface before sanding. I'll zoom in on that post there, the star point. So the result is a really even surface. After sanding, you can see it's very flat. There's not much cupping in the wood and the wire. It's all flush, so uh, it feels really smooth. You can see a little bit of the urethane finish variation over here, a little splotchiness. So embedding the wires deeper definitely helped. The laser cutting design for this board uh, gave a 0.1 millimeter tolerance for the slots that the wires go in, and the wires fit snugly. So I like that allowance for uh, the laser cutter's tool path. And then uh, these posts for the star points are again brass rods, and uh, I drilled those holes out with an 11 30 seconds drill bit, I think. Let me think about whether that was. Oh no, 11 uh, So roughly four millimeters. Um, I could have used a slightly smaller drill bit, I think. Those holes ended up a little bit large. You can see the post isn't quite centered in this hole and uh, there's a little bit of uh, sort of darkness surrounding it. That's where the urethane is filled in the gap. So it's definitely smooth on the surface. Um, again, I tried to center the center post really well compared to my last board and make sure there weren't gaps around that those center wires. So this one ended up really nice on the center. So the other one has a little bit of a gap on one side, but it's no big deal. Um, so embedding the wires deeper definitely helped. Uh, centering those posts helped. I would probably opt to drill those holes a little smaller if I did this again, when I do this again. And what else to say? I'd say the urethane finish is much smoother than last time because I sanded it and polished it a little bit. Uh, and finally, the uh, sort of cover up this inlaid wood, I think looks really nice. Um, we thought about just leaving the boards with a, a slot all the way around and uh, decided that they definitely look better uh, as a solid block. So I do like the aesthetic of this shape. It um, feels really solid and compact and the inlaid wood is a nice little textural variation. And when you play the game, you're gonna be facing the board from the end. So you're looking along the grain and looking at the end grain of the wood. So this little inlay is a cool textural variation here. On the side with the grain, it's not as obvious. You can hardly tell there's an inlay there. So it kind of matches the grain nicely. And on the other side, you can see it's, it pops. So I like the little textural variation on the ends, I think it looks cool. So overall, I'd say this experiment was a success. And uh, these little boards are much faster to produce than the 19 by 19, which is more than four times as large by area. It involves a lot more cutting wire, a lot more laser cutting time.
and just more surfaces to stain and sand and seal. So these little ones are quite fun to make. Um, came out really nicely. So for my next one, I'll probably do, I'll try to do a nine by nine on the back of a 13 by 13. And uh, that'll be fun to try because it's gonna involve finishing both sides and you know working on inlaying wire on one side and sanding that and then flipping it over and working on inlaying wire in the other. And the 13 by 13, you know, as you go up in area, it takes considerably longer to make one. So, um, but yeah, I'm thinking about how uh, feasible it might be to produce these at a larger scale. And definitely the, the hardest step is um, getting the laser cutter parameters correct to cut those wire slots. But uh, beyond that, I think, I mean, inlaying the wire obviously requires quite a bit of effort, but uh, that part is, you know, doesn't require any special tools. You can just do that with common household tools. So overall, it's a great success. Woo, that was a long video. If you're still with me, thanks for watching. As you can see, I made two of these 9x9 Go boards. I think they were very successful, um, and I'm looking to keep experimenting with these down the road. But I'll only be keeping one of these, so uh, if you're interested, let me know. I'll be selling the other one. Thanks for watching. <laughs>